your gambling debts because you're my brother, but... Oh, you're preaching again. Now listen, Fred, what I do is my business. Not anymore, Dave. There's a lot of cattle missing from the double bar oak, Kurt. First, I thought it was rustlers. It is rustlers. No, it ain't. You've been selling them cattle. That's a lie. It's the truth. I found out about your separate bank account today. The cashier down at the bank let it slip out. Now, I can't go on. All right. What are you going to do about it? I don't know yet. Oh, 
Not so loud, son. Someday the double bar O is going to belong to you. I was just making sure in case. Say, what are you doing up so late? I forgot to put my pony in the barn. Oh, oh that's bad. A good cow hand always takes care of his horse the first thing. I know. All right, you go and take care of now, because we're going to ride the first thing in the morning. You saw nothing, understand? You saw nothing. Where are those eggs, Potts? You're as slow as a Missouri mule. And doggone if you don't kick like one. Here you are. Salt rising biscuits. What in thunder do you call this? Well, what's the matter, boss? <coughs> Doggone it, I must have kept them in the oven a mite too long. You blundering old idiots, you've been cooking here for 22 years. I'm sick of this food you're dishing up. You're fired. Fired again? Yes, and this time is final. Now get out. Oh, shucks. If I hadn't figured this job was going to be permanent, I never would have took it. <laughs> That's what you get for sticking that nose where it don't belong. 
Take plenty, Bill Barton. What's the matter with you, Bill? Plenty. You know that bunch of cattle we hid in Blind Canyon? Yeah. Well, they ain't there now. What do you mean they're not there? I left Al and Joe to watch them. Yeah, well, Al's minus his front teeth and Joe's nose points due west. The two-gun troubadour. Yeah. He comes out of nowhere and nearly massacres them two and then drives the cattle off. Come on. Bill? Yeah? Read this. Double Bar O Ranch, Mr. Thomas Bradfield, sir. This is to notify you that your note of May 3rd is due and payable. Expect you to be prompt in retiring this obligation. Kirk Dean. Looks like you're gonna close in on Bradfield. Yep, the double bar will be a thousand acres larger next week. Look, Kirk, that's another thing I wanna tell you about. Bradfield's got most of his herd lined up on the flats. It may be that uh, he's gonna pay off. That couldn't be better. Round up the boys and we'll make sure that he doesn't. Can't outsmart you. Not often. My saddlebags are filled with beans and jerky. I have rambled up and down and now I aim to see the town, to see the town of Albuquerque. What happened, young fella? Rustlers. They shot me. Did you recognize any of them? No. They were too far away from me. Shooks, you dirty scum. Don't shoot, cowboy. Come over here, old timer, and give me a hand. Why, that's young Tom Bradfield that runs the bar Z over there. Yeah, we'd better get him back over to the house. job we ever pulled. Can you imagine young Bradfield riding herd all by himself? That was our good luck. But listen, Bill, you're getting a little too handy with that shooting iron. I don't like killing. Getting soft, huh? Meaning? Oh, nothing. We've done a wonderful job. I want to thank you for dropping everything and coming over and helping us. Goodbye. Bye. Doc says it's only a scratch. Tomorrow you'll be up as spry as a cat and fit as a fiddle. Why, <laughs> they can't hurt a tough young fellow like you. That's right. They can't hurt tough young fellows like us. Yippee! I get... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah, shucks. I think I'm about to come unglued. <laughs> it's not that. My herd is gone, and I can't pay off. Oh, I think the bank will wait under the circumstances. It isn't the bank. Kirk Dean holds my note, and he won't wait. I know. Kirk Dean, huh? Well, what in the tarnation did you go to him for? Well, the bank said they were carrying too many of us ranchers and suggested that I go to Mr. Dean. Well... Take care of yourself, Brad, too. <laughs> Keep your chin up. You reckon young Tom Bradfield's gonna be all right in there by himself, stranger? Yeah, I reckon he'll be all right. Elmer Potts. <laughs> old grub wrecker, you. Elmer Potts? 
Hey, do you know me? Who are you? I'm a riding down the trail to Albuquerque. You remember? Why, that was Little Fred's song. You're not. You, you, well, let me look at you. Why, you are Fred Dean. Oh, you sure have changed into a fine man. Your father would be mighty proud of you. Poor old Dan. You know, I haven't forgotten I never caught up with the murder of my father. No, but I never will, I reckon. I wouldn't bet on that, Elmer. Say, uh, I wonder, do you think you could get a job for me with my Uncle Kirk? I don't think he'd recognize me, do you? Can't do it. I've just been fired myself after 22 years. Well, that's going to change things. How about you throwing in with me? Well, that's just exactly what I expect to do. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'm going to have something mighty all fired important, Elmer. And uh, you can sure help me out. Now, I'll tell you what you do. When you've made the boy comfortable, ride into town and wait for him. Well, all right. Uh, say, did you just get back into this part of the country? Well, not exactly. See, I've been hiding out around here for a spell. And, uh... Just to get in the lay of the land, huh? Yeah. And by the way, call me Fred Evans. See you in town. Good time. Yeah, they're in good shape. They're traveling right along. They ought to make the border by morning. Round them up now and make camp. We'll be on the way again at sunup. Okay. Get them straight. We got them across the border without any trouble. You ought to get a good price for them cattle. Yeah, keep them going. Tell the boys to turn them over to Pedro's men and head for home. As soon as we settle with him, we'll ride the state coast back. Howdy, Pedro. Ah, oh, buenos dias, senor. While you have been rest in the hotel, senor, we have examined and counted cattle. I haven't much time. The stagecoach is waiting. Bueno. Very good. I will pay you now, senor. Thanks, Pedro. I'll be along this way again soon. Bueno, and adios. Traveling must be light. Suits me. I can stretch my legs. I'm tired. Like I said, you get an old boss. Maybe so, but I'm still smart. It's a lot good piece of money I got off of Bradfield. Now I'll take his ranch. It ain't all yours, Kirk. Didn't say it was, did I? Well, just don't forget it, that's all. The sun's getting low. I think I'll get some shut eye. Tell the boys we left at the ranch to meet us with the horses? Oh, sure. Senor. Don't know that, caballeros. It is bad for the elves. 
Lester down from the coach and throw the gun down first. And now, Senor Dean, I must trouble you for the money. You're making a mistake. I have no money on me. The wallet, Senor. Throw it on the ground. Gracias, Senores. And now the caballeros may return to the coach. Pronto! Dean, 
cielito lindo vienen. <laughs> What's so funny? Your face is not to be swelled up about. I'm glad I'm getting that Bradfield Ranch. Our water's drying up. You usually get what you go after, don't you, Kurt? Usually. Good morning, Dean. See here, Holbrook. You was elected sheriff to preserve law and order. That's what I aim to do. What about this two-gone troubadour? He's robbing the country. Oh, I don't reckon so. All he ever done was to put cattle back on the lawful ranges. I'm warning you, if I catch up with him, I'll handle him in my own way. You sent for me, Sheriff? Yes. Young Bradfield was killed this morning. Bradfield? Our dean here found him. He met me at the notary's office and paid off his note. On his way home, he was shot by the two-gun troubadour. Well, just how do you know that, Mr. Dean? On my way to the ranch, I found him laying in the road. The poor young fellow just had strength enough to write the name of the killer in the dust before he died. I'm writing you the posse. Thoughts? I'm deputizing you to act as caretaker for Bradfield's place until I can get in touch with the folks. Now, Sheriff, I ain't as young as I used to be. I'll go with you, Elmer. Is that okay with you, Sheriff? I reckon that will be all right. Mighty good of you to help me out, Fred. Bradfield's place is right next to Kirk Dean's ranch, ain't it? Why, sure. And then there's another thing, Elmer. Such as? To find out who killed young Bradfield. Why? The two gun troop. Well, let's be going. Where have you been? In town? What of it? What of it? Just this. 150 head of cattle off the Bradfield place are back on it. That's what of it. The sheriff's still out looking for that troubadour. He's been doing it now for three weeks. You seem mighty anxious to catch the fellow that shot Bradfield. Sort of did you a favor. Well, maybe it wasn't the two-gun troubadour. You? He ain't the only one who can cover his face and wrap a blanket around himself. You're going to get us in trouble. I told you I don't hold with murder. It changed your mind since your brother was killed, huh? Yeah, what do you mean? You know I saw him killed. I know who done it. And it wasn't in self-defense. Two-gun troubadour has been right busy here lately, ain't he? Uh, yeah, that's what they say. 
So you got the rig hitched up? Yep, she's all hitched up to waiting for you. Uh, now, listen, Eleanor. When I bring this cool morning back, try to be on your good behavior, will you? No, don't hit that. Stay out of that. Bradfield. Well, by granted, I reckon I'll be starting back to school again. Yes, sir. This is Elmer Fox, Miss Bradfield. Miss Evans has been telling me all about you. I'm happy to know you, Mr. Potter. Same to you, Miss. Elmer, will you get uh, Miss Bradfield's trunk, please? It's practically here right now. Well, this is your home, Miss. I hope you'll be happy here. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Perhaps I will in time, but there's so many things here that remind me of Tom. like you'd been born and raised in the West, Miss Helen. I feel it, too. I hope I never have to go back to teaching. This is that funny old Elmer. You like it here, don't you? <laughs> oh, I love it. I could be awfully happy here if it weren't for... Y your brother? Yes, I understand. I guess you're tired. I'll run over and look after the yearlings. All right. Howdy, Mom. Miss Bradfield, I guess. Yes. I'm your next door neighbor, Kirk Dean, owner of the Double Bar O. How do you do, Mr. Dean? These are some of my boys. I'm thinking this is no place for a good-looking young lady. Then why not? There's some rough characters about. Yes. Yes, I see you're right. There's that two gone troubadour with that. Excuse me, Miss Bradfield. I didn't mean to go into that. Just what is it that you want, Mr. Dean? I'd like to buy your ranch. It's not for sale. Is that final? That's final. I hope you're not sorry, Miss Bradfield.
can't understand. He got away again. He must hold up somewhere. Yes, and when he does, he pulls a hole right in after him. Kirk, you're losing your nerve. What you need is a drink. Yeah. There's a mighty sweet girl who teaches learning at the old red schoolhouse down our way. The folks are saying it's downright sin the way Cowboy Bill hangs around the school all day. The cowboy and the school mom go riding every night for the rolling plains in the bright moonlight. Folks say he serenades her beneath the moon above, and the songs he sings are songs of love. Now school mom Sal is a pretty city gal, and folks say she's just bringing Bill along. But the cowboy and the school mom got married here last night, so what folks say can sometimes be wrong. Now they say the cowboy and the school marm have a brand new cottage down our way. The folks are saying it won't be long until they'll be through and separate someday. But the cowboy and the school marm still ride the moonlit trail, and together they hear the nightingale. And he still serenades her with tender words of love as they ride beneath the moon above. So don't believe all the gossip you receive. The way folks throw the dirt is just a fright. For the cowboy and the schoolmaster are happy as can be. The stork left them a package last night. Yeah, I forgot it was going to end like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which way did he go? Which way did who go, Sheriff? Why, the two-gun troubadour. We've got him cornered at last. Now, you fellows must be mistaken. You're not mistaken, Sheriff. There's your two-gun troubadour. Now, wait a minute, Miss Branfield. Take him, Sheriff. I saw you go in the bunkhouse with these clothes on. And I also saw where you hid them. You sure of this, Miss? Of course I'm sure. Here are the clothes. I'm taking you in. Hand me those guns. Get on that horse there with Hank. You're wrong, Miss Helen. I ain't saying he ain't the two-gun troubadour, but he never killed your brother nor nobody else. 
I know that boy. I'm going into town. I'm asking for a man to ride with the party. I'm with you, sir. Get your horse. Locking up an innocent man won't save a hundred head of double barrel cattle. Signed, two gun troubadour. And the sheriff arresting that dumb ranch hand, Evans. And a sheriff supposed to have brains. Listen, Kirk, I'm getting ideas. Let's get back to the ranch as quick as we can. That's my idea, that's good. Come on, Sheriff, did he get away? Yeah. Oh, you can go, Fred. That's right. Well, I've enjoyed my stay with you here. I'm gonna recommend the hotel to all my friends. Seriously, Sheriff, can you loan me a horse to get home? Uh, yes, of course. Oh, that's fine. But I'm sorry I mistook you for the two-gun troubadour. <laughs> that's all right. Everybody makes mistakes, Sheriff. That's why they put rubber mats around Cuspidor. <laughs> First thing, if we drive all your cattle onto the Bradfield Range, the two-gun troubadour will be stuck. No cattle. Yeah. Then we hide out. We let him into the double bar hole, but we don't let him out. All right, so far, but how'll I explain to the Bradfield girl about my cattle being on her land? Let her explain how your Russell cattle got on her land. It'll work. If the sheriff thinks she put Fred Evans and that old geezer Potts up to stealing my cattle, Evans will tell her to get before they run her out of town. Yeah, and then we'll be rid of her and get her land at our own price. What do you mean, we? Just what I said, we split. Uh, of course, certainly. Well, it worked, didn't it? It sure did, thanks to you, you old grub slinger. Oh, I has my moments, and I mean to obey orders. Now, you get over and keep the Bradfield girl busy so she won't see us. Sort of a social call, eh? I'm hoping there won't be anybody at the double bar O, so I can do what I've been trying to do, search that house. How's that look? It looks fine. All right, come on, old Cameron.
Don't forget what I told you, Elmer. Well, that's what I call right neighborly. Here I come a visiting, and you open the door before I even knock. I was just going out. What do you want? No, that's no way to talk to an upstanding citizen of the community. I think you will get it. Now, miss, there's no reason to get all fussed up. Sit down. A little bit of a spitfire, ain't you? Well, I like him that way. Maybe I can tame you down, though. You are a little bit hasty with the gun, Senor Barton. <laughs> but not hasty enough. Don't shoot. I plumb forgot to load that gun. Help me take charge of this maverick. Helen, you're just going to have to trust me. I didn't kill your brother. I'll come back after I get this thing cleared up. She believed me about that gun, ain't it? <laughs> sure was. Well, I'll see you later, Elmer. Love's gone, but I'm tired. I'll take another look at them troubadour things. Maybe I'll get ideas. Come on. I wonder if... Come on. We're riding again.
Let that stay open. Tell the boys to run them clear to the forehand of Bradfield's ranch. Well, that job's done. <laughs> See, si. muy bien, Senor Dean. Evans, why you're the troubadour? Yes, and I'm requesting the pleasure of your company. And I know Miss Bradfield's going to want to thank you for that present over there. Come on, your carriage awaits you. You won't need your horse. Reserve seats right this way. Need us wearing ourselves out of hauling these galoots to town. The sheriff's here. There's his horse right over there. It's all right with me. Now, we'll use the same idea we were going to use with the sheriff's office. You keep Bill at the door. Understand? I got it down pat. Don't think you're going to get away with this outrage, Evan. You want to put a little bet on it, Kirk? Come on, let's go inside. Come on, you. Haul out of there. Come on. Go. Look out there, look out there. Forward, Mark. Go on, get up there. Howdy, Sheriff. Brought a friend home for supper. I figured you'd be coming back. Yes. The criminal always returns to the scene of his crime. This time, no funny stuff. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Here's where we cools our puppies off for the time being. Hey, Sheriff. Take a look at this piece of paper. You will, huh? Hmm. This says that Fred Dean is the rightful owner to the double bar O. And I'm Fred Dean. Yeah, and I'm the Queen of Sheba. My birth certificate. My nephew a murdered. Yes, and I'm charging you with... Now, just a minute, Sheriff. Here's a little piece of paper I'm going to read myself. <clears throat> I, William Barton, of my own free will and because I wish to clear an innocent man, am offering this statement. Kurt Dean is the murderer of Tom Bradfield, whom he shot down in cold blood. He, Kurt Dean, further confessed that he wore a mask and cape similar to the two-gun troubadour so that no suspicion would ever rest on him. Signed, William Barton. It's a lie. There's not a word of truth in it. Sheriff, I know who shot Bradfield. You keep your mouth shut, Kurt. You double-crosser. There's the murder of Bradfield. What if I did kill Bradfield? I shot him in self-defense. Now, that's another lie. He was shot in the back. And I ain't felt so low as I shoot my own brother. Fred, there's a man who killed your dad. I saw him. And if I swing, there'll be two of us. Don't believe him, sir. He's lying to save his own neck. Well, how about this confession? Why? There ain't nothing on it. Well, what's the difference? It worked just the same, didn't it? All right. Let's go. Fred. Could you... Could you forgive me? Dad gummit, I got to drive that there wagon to town. There ain't nothing but cold beans for supper. Oh, shucks, I don't reckon you'd know the difference no how. <clears throat> 
Oh, my God. 